Guys, there's this little movie out in the world called Roma. You may have heard of it. It is the odds-on favorite to win Best Picture this year at the Academy Awards. And I'm kind of fascinated about why Netflix, the all-seeing, all-powerful media entity, needs and wants an Oscar. It has two already, but they're fairly small as Oscars go. One was from last year for Best Documentary Feature, Icarus, and a few years back it won for Best Documentary Short for The White Helmets. Roma is a different kind of beast. It is directed by Alfonso Cuaron. It is a masterful portrait of life in Mexico in the 1970s. Why do you guys think that Netflix wants an Oscar? Allison? I do think the operative word is wants more than needs. Like Netflix is clearly doing fine as far as reach and user base and revenue goes. But I think it's kind of the flip side of what they've been doing in TV. Like on TV, they want to be HBO and they also want to be CBS. And I guess at the box office, they want to be you know, 20th Century Fox, but they also want to be Fox Searchlight. They really want to be all things to all people. And I think they've definitely cornered that market as far as like popular, successful, you know, to all the boys I've loved before type movies go. And then this is like the ultimate signal that they have made it and that they have an achievement as far as the prestige market goes. What is prestige really worth right now? I guess that's kind of the secondary question that comes with this. Well, I think it's worth the directors and actors that Netflix wants because Netflix wants all the directors to want to work with him, despite the fact that their theatrical release strategy is somewhat in the air and they want movie stars and actors and actresses because they just want a monopoly. They want everyone. And directors, actors and actresses and other creators want approval via awards. So I think if they can prove that they you can be on Netflix and still get an Oscar, that's one less reason for people to say no thanks. Yeah, and to invoke a... a bracing image from succession. It's a closed loop system. They go out on the awards trail and they talk, they evangelize for Netflix. It's like, this is the biggest time when Alfonso Cuaron and all these guys are gonna be going out there and what do they say? Like nobody asks, what's it like to work for Warner Brothers? But they ask every single interview, what's your relationship like with Netflix? It's like free publicity for this company that is like the company least in need of publicity in the world next to Apple. It's, it's kind of remarkable. It's true. They probably also don't have a monopoly on like awards viewers yet. They have a monopoly on people who have a Netflix subscription. And yeah. They're like, yo, Bird Box, sure, I'll watch it. But I don't think that every single person who seeks out all the art films and is like, I really care about the Oscars. I, I mean, most of them probably do have a Netflix subscription at this point because like, that's how the world works. But they aren't quite as devoted to it. And it does buy their loyalty, I guess. I guess I'm just not totally sure how valuable that is. I think, what Chris, what you're saying is true to some extent, but I also think it works against the company. By constantly invoking the corporation that has funded what you've made, you are essentially identifying that you work for a corporation, which is kind of not in the spirit of making art. And there's something kind of fascinating about this idea that, much like Marvel, Netflix is Netflix first. It's very rarely the, the film first or the television show first. We, we talk about this, Allison, you've written about this for years now, about what it means to be a Netflix show. And what it means to be a Netflix movie feels like an evolving concept. Well, it is interesting to me that, especially as it relates to their award strategy with the Emmys, it's almost like a complete inversion. Like with the Emmys, it's literally a carpet bomb. They mm -hmm. don't necessarily have the three or four most nominated shows, but they have so many shows that in turn get so many nominations that they, you know, this was the first year that they beat out HBO in terms of the total nominations. And then I think they tied for the ultimate awards. So I think with the Emmys especially, it really is like Netflix, Netflix, Netflix. And when you go to the Oscars, you know, they had, I think, 15 total nominations this year, and two thirds of that is just Roma. So I do think there's a little more of a careful effort this time to like get behind a single artistic project. And I think Roma does come out you know, as much, if not more, than the distributor in at least this case. The thing that's fascinating to me is that the extinction level event for this town, which is Netflix and which is coming to destroy theater going and all this other stuff that we hold so dear as like part of our uh, pop culture consumption process is also the thing that's keeping alive careers like Quaron's and the Coen brothers and Steven Soderbergh's and underwriting all the people that we think should be, you know, placed in this hallowed, hallowed area of Hollywood or be able to make the movies that they want to make. And, and Netflix is the one who's letting them do it. This very thing that is taking away, you know, the, Hollywood's market share on our time is also the thing that's perpetuating these careers. It's, it's like an absolutely fascinating paradox. It's an interesting thing too, because one of the things we talk about with Netflix movies is 
The fact that Netflix makes movies that Hollywood doesn't always make anymore, some of their best movies last year, were not necessarily awards fair. They were rom-coms or they were teen comedies. They were movies that have kind of moved into a new realm of consumption. And I'm curious to see in the years to come whether a Netflix movie is more like Roma or more like To All the Boys I've Loved Before or Bird Box Mm -hmm. or any number, or even The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, which I wouldn't classically define as an awards movie. It's a Coen Brothers movie, so it's naturally going to be noted, and it did get three Oscar nominations. But what direction do you think the company is going to go in terms of what kind of movies it makes? I mean, I think the real answer is both. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I certainly think that they will make more of the intensely watchable To All the Boys I've Loved Befores just because those movies do really well. And we know they do really well because they've actually told us that they're successful on Netflix, which is extremely rare. But, you know, they have a conquer everything strategy. Netflix just wants to wipe out all of the competition. So I think they'll, they will keep trying at the Oscars just because there's someone else competing against them. And it's funny that you can see, like, it's more of an expenditure and effort for them. Like, you know, the veracity of this is debatable, but one of the excuses studios will always offer in terms of how insane Oscar campaigns are is, you know, it does theoretically help box office. And maybe they don't break even, but, like, there usually is a tangible bump. And Netflix doesn't care about and usually doesn't have box office. And then they had to, like, pay to put Roma in theaters explicitly for, basically for the purposes of its Oscar campaign so they didn't freak out voters too much. And it's so weird to see the cart leading the horse in this one specific Oscar campaign. I agree with Amanda that it'll probably be both. And if I had to be cynical about it, I'm sure it'll be more Bird Box and Cloverfield Paradox and things that they buy off of studios that they don't have a spot for on the release slate. But the hopeful side of me anecdotally sees, especially from doing the watch like and hearing from people, is that they just give stuff more of a chance if it's on Netflix because of ease of use. They go to the main page, and if something's sitting right there and they see a picture and they're like, that guy, I'll... I give this 15 minutes. And you know, if you watch 15 minutes of Roma, hopefully you'll be captivated. And if you watch 15 minutes of Buster Scruggs, hopefully you'll be captivated. Maybe you even convert someone who's never heard of the Coen brothers or Alfonso Corona into liking or being interested in their work, which is a lot easier than we're gonna have this full rollout of press and television, uh, talk show appearances and trailers, and we're gonna hope to get the word out, and then it's only gonna be in a few theaters. So if you live anywhere outside of New York, Chicago, or Los Angeles, you might have a hard time seeing this piece of art. Like Netflix completely cuts that middleman out. Given that it's a conquer everything strategy, I wonder if we'll get to a place in two, three years where three or four of the films nominated for Best Picture are all made by Netflix. I think that that is actually something that is in play here, and I'm curious to see if they're going to continue to push forward with these kinds of films aggressively, because the Roma choice was very specific. The year prior, we had Mudbound, which was sort of its first serious effort at campaigning for Best Picture, and they didn't get that nomination. Roma is a major, is as much of an all-in as you could possibly have in this respect. And there's an enormous amount of expenditure that goes into getting movies these nominations and getting the film in front of people and getting the talent in front of the, the voters. Do you guys see a world in which we there are five Romas somewhere down the line? I think you can definitely see them like upping their reps. I do think it's really interesting that at the same time that this award season brouhaha is going on, like in subsequent weekends, they have released a Jake Gyllenhaal vehicle directed by a Gilroy, which I'm I'm assuming if it were maybe like a little better received, might have been pushed a few months, and a Steven Soderbergh movie. Mm-hmm. And you know, the fact that they have enough of that level of movie that they can save a few just to kind of throw out in February that they know aren't going to get any awards consideration, at least to me, says that they are doing enough that they have some stuff saved for next October and the October after that. Let me just pitch one hypothetical to Mm -hmm. you guys. If you were in the film industry, would you hold it against Netflix that Netflix wants this too? I would not at all. Because I, and I have kind of been frustrated with that narrative as it applies to Roma. There are a lot of people who are against Roma because it's a movie that you should see in theaters and that it's on Netflix, you know, ruins the fidelity of the whatever. Uh, That's true. And I saw Roma in a theater and that was really meaningful to me. But the fact that Roma is on Netflix means that millions of people around the world can see Roma who would never have a chance to see Roma. And that's true for a lot of movies. And it just provides access to a lot of people who otherwise will never go to the theater and will never see your movie. So if you're in the industry and your goal is to have people see your movie, which as I understand it is most people's goal, I think Netflix is your best bet and is opening a lot of doors and audiences that that weren't there. Yeah, and the one in 100, this sounds Pollyanna-ish, but the one in 100,000 person who went to Netflix that day to watch The Ranch and found Roma, like, that's pretty remarkable. Guess we'll have to wait and see if Roma wins or not. Thanks, guys.